Ladies and gentlemen, the director of the MIT Sensible City Laboratory, Carlo Ratti. Hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. A uh, great pleasure to be here. Can we have uh, the slides, please? Um, I'm going to share with you something about um, uh, what we're doing with cities and how technology, we believe, is radically changing and transforming cities. Now, to, to tell you what's happening, I wanted to start with a, with a metaphor. Now, I'm Italian. Everybody in Italy grows up with a picture like this in, in their bedroom. But the reason I'm showing you this is that actually something very interesting happened in Formula One over the past 10, 15 years. Now, 10, 15 years ago, if you wanted to win a Formula One race, you needed a car, a good car, and a good driver. And then, you know, if they were good enough, you'll win the race. Actually, today, if you want to win a race, you need also a system like this, which is made of thousands and thousands of sensors onto the car, collecting information in real time, sending information to those computers, analyzing, processing, and making decisions in real time. In other terms, that what, as engineers, we call a real-time control system, a system that's based on a sensing component and an actuating component, collecting information from, from, from the environment and then responding to that. And sensing and actuating is really what we, every dynamic system does and what we all do, every living system does. When we meet each other, we sense each other, we, we look at each other, we touch each other, shake hands, and then we, we respond to that information. Now, the amazing thing we believe today is that our cities are starting to behave like that Formula One racing cars. They've been layered, blanketed, with many, many digital type of information, uh, with networks, with sensors, with, uh, uh, you know, you name it, all of these kind of dig digital layers. And because of that, we can sense them in a new way and respond to that information in a new way. Uh, a couple of words about cities, why we believe they are important. 250, 75, and 80. Cities are 2% of the surface of the planet, but 50% of the population, 75% of energy consumption, 80% of CO2 emissions. So if we can do something to make them more efficient, that can be a big deal. And you know, all of this, where is all of this going actually? Is, is almost making every atom out there, the physical world, both a sensor and an actuator. Uh, there was an exhibition at MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, recently here in New York. We, we were part of that called Talk to Me. And we believe that because of this, our cities are starting to talk back to us, to respond to us, thank to, thanks to all of this sensing in the actuating. Almost like the old dream of Michelangelo. You know, when he sculpted the mosaic, so the story goes. He took a hammer, he threw the hammer at the mosaic. There's still a little chip there on the knee. And then he shouted, perché non parli? Why don't you speak? And today, things, for the first time, are starting to speak back to us. Our buildings, our homes, our cities. Uh, so just a couple of examples from sensing and actuation, and then I'll tell you where we see this, uh, this actually leading. In terms of sensing, what we can do today, here is an example. Um, you know, if you take this computer, you know everything about this computer. All the chips, you know where they were coming from and how they became that computer. But a few years from now, when you stop using it, sometimes that computer will end up like this. So our idea was, what if we actually develop a little chip? Uh, it's got in the same way as we heard before about how today you can actually build your own cell phone in, a, in, a, in an easy way, thanks to open source. Well, we had to design this almost like a miniature cell phone and then use this to actually follow trash. Um, what you see here is the first deployment we did uh, in Seattle. 500 people, 3,000 tags. tagging all these different objects and then starting to follow them. So you see the day of deployment, Seattle. After a few days, the main landfills next to Seattle. But then a big surprise actually, how far things travel. Nobody actually was expecting that. Sometimes a very clumsy way, look at the trace from Seattle to Chicago, all the way to Baja, California. And then still moving after a month, in two months. We 
didn't know the Firewood Symphony was uh, the music we needed. Well, uh, so we learned a couple of things from this. First thing is actually that if we get all this information, like when you go to hospital, they put a tracer in your blood and they follow it through your body, how that gives you a lot of information about it, how we can do the same at the scale of the city and perhaps optimize and save a lot of energy with, uh, with this data. Now, the second thing is about actually changing behavior. So one of the most telling emails we got after the project was by somebody who said, I used to drink water in plastic bottle, put them outside my door, think they would disappear, but actually I know now they don't disappear, they go just a few miles from home, they'll stay there forever, so I actually change my behavior. Now the third thing we learned, and I'll show you just in a sec, is actually was completely unexpected, but happened when uh, more recently we had a burglar came to our lab at MIT, steal a lot of stuff, including some of the tag that tell you where they go. <laughs> and here is what happened. Um, well, uh, can we actually skip this? Yes, uh, I, um, then this was about sensing and about collecting information from the environment. Just a couple of words about you know, the actuation, which is the most exciting thing. It's about design, it's about architecture. Just a couple of examples. Um, in this case, the mayor of Copenhagen came to us to ask for how these new technologies can help with traffic. You know, traffic in Copenhagen looks like this. Uh, quite surprising, a lot of bikes. So this is what we came up with. Um, uh, actually, what there, uh, with um, there was a video, but with um, uh, can we go back one slide? Okay, this is probably a small problem. Uh, but I, we actually with a with a bicycle that uh, uh, collects information when you're cycling, when you brake, you get back your energy, and then it gives it back to you when when you need cycling. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, you just change uh, the the hub. And then every bike then becomes a kind of responsive electric bike, uh, sensing what is going on in, in the environment. Or another example, here is the mayor of Copenhagen with uh, the bicycle. Or uh, another example, can we, sorry, can we press the button again? Okay. Okay. Um, and, uh, or another example more about architecture. Um, here is um, a project we did for the World Expo in uh, Saragossa. Uh, the theme of the expo was water, and the mayor came to us um, saying, you know, water has been a beautiful ingredient of architecture and planning for thousands of years. How can we use it today in a new way? And here the idea was, uh, imagine you have a pipe and many, many tabs onto that pipe that open and close, and then you can create almost like a living water wall that you can write on it, show patterns, images, or you approach it, and it will open up to let you jump through it. So because of that, we got the uh, commission to design a uh, building at the entrance of the expo. The whole building is made of water. And uh, no doors or windows, but when you approach it, it opens up to, to let you in. When you're inside, all the space expands and shrinks based on how many people you have. The roof is also covered with a thin layer of water. Then if there is too much wind, actually you can lower the roof to minimize splashing. Or, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can actually close the building and the whole architecture disappears. Hopefully without anybody underneath. 
And uh, here you can see the building before the opening. This guy was very, very puzzled. Uh, you can see his face. Uh, here you can see the digital fix pixels and the physical pixels combined with projection on. This was myself trying not to get wet. And I'll tell you now what happened one night when actually all of the sensors stopped working. You know, they're all connected to a computer. The computer crashed. So we were terrified because the building would do its own crazy things but don't respond anymore to people. But actually that night was one of the most fun nights because uh, um, the way to interact with the building became something else, like this. <laughs> And for us, it was important because as architects, as engineers, we always think we know about how people will respond and use the stuff we design. But then reality, especially human reality, is always a big surprise. And in the last minute I have, I wanted to share with you, so these were two examples very fast of sensing how we can collect information from, from environment, from our cities, and actuating how we can respond to that, and how this can really open a new world of architecture and design. But now I wanted to finish just with one question, which is what we are looking at. And, you know, almost as a, as a wish. Uh, can we have actually a world without slums using this DIY uh, thinking that we just heard about before? You know, if you think about architecture, this is how we've always been building cities. We didn't have cities 7,000 years ago. They started coming to existence between seven to 10,000 years ago. And then for thousands of years, we've been designing cities and building them in a kind of with a big, broad, bottom-up kind of endeavor. Now, this is actually then how we started doing cities over the past, uh, say, 100, 200 years. Uh, that's a hand of Le Corbusier presenting the Plan Voisin for Paris. Uh, for those of you who are not architects, you know, the Plan for Paris by Corbusier around 100 years ago was, uh, the idea was simple, was just demolish everything, uh, just leave Notre Dame and a couple of other things, just as little quaint um, uh, monuments, and uh, uh, replace everything with these beautiful new skyscrapers. Uh, designed by him. And here you can see the hand of the architect, almost like the hand of God, showing really how things should be. This kind of, not bottom-up, but actually top-down way of doing things. And I think what we heard just in a presentation before, in two presentations today, is actually that today there's a different way of doing things. It's a way of doing things in a collaborative, open-source, bottom-up way. It can happen if you want to do a 3D printer. It happened here. It happened in all the Arab Spring Revolution. It's certainly now part of, of our DNA and culture. You know, nobody was betting on Wikipedia 15 years ago, but then, hey, today is actually the number one place where you go and get encyclopedia, where you go and get knowledge online. So the idea is actually, can we leverage some of these mechanisms uh, and use them uh, for cities? And actually for having a kind of DIY approach to cities and to slum to really help use knowledge in order to retrofit all of this and use this new technology and the sharing of information uh, in order to address the problem of housing for everybody on this planet. Thank you.